This is Dhamma on air number eight, and there is four questions. But first, a normal intro. Nami Tasso Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa Worthy, honorable, and perfectly self enlightened is the blessed Buddha. First, I'd like to say thank you for the questions. They are very good. Uh, please keep sending in uh, to bente.samahita at gmail.com and then I'll check them the next Sunday. The first question is, that how is it after a few words it is reported that some bhikkhus attain uh, arahatship uh, less than five minutes after they have been ordained? And there's actually three reports of seven-year-old uh, boys that while they were being shaven, they attained uh, arahatship, they become enlightened right there, right then. And the explanation is, uh, this person also asks, how 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 can uh, the Theravada tradition account for this? That people, some people apparently can become ordained after very, very short learning. And uh, the reason is that they have been training many lives before. So they need only very, very little and actually, the Abhidhamma uh, divides people up in, in, in beings who can be divided by hearing four lines of the Dhamma, people who can be enlightened by hearing eight lines, and people who can be enlightened by hearing uh, 16 lines, that is four stanzas, of four lines each. So there's no mystery in it. They have been training all very, very close to enlightenment in the last life. Then they come back here, uh, and they're very ready for it. And then they only need to see some small things, and uh, then it will happen to them. Uh, it's, they are very close. You can say there is a threshold level uh, in the mind for this phase transition to occur. And if you're very close to this phase, uh, with this threshold, then you need a small push up uh, to cross the threshold, and then the enlightenment process, the phase transition of consciousness, sets in. They are very mature. Uh, even though they are very, very young. And the Buddha, he actually said to, to, to the elderly monks, uh, for one of these uh, particular boys that were seven years old, they have a seven-year-old body, huh? but they're not seven years in the mind. So he said to, uh, to the older monks, to the senior monks, don't, don't pat them on the head and, and treat them like boys, because they are the oldest one in the universe. They're older than you. So there can very well be a, a person who's 85 years biologically in the body, uh, but he's a fool in his mind. He said, like a child. And this also goes for all other age ages. Then you can have very young people who are very mature in mind. And, and in this case, at the Buddhist time, there was three actually recorded that became enlightened uh, at the age of seven. One of them, there's a, a, a funny anecdote. He, you know, they, they have nothing to do really because they have done what should be done. So then, then they have no more to do. So uh, this particular, it was Dabba, Dabba the Malian. He asked uh, Buddha what, what he should do. And then and the Buddha, he assigned to him that uh, you, can, you can show whenever there comes new uh, monks into Jetavana, then you can show them their huts, their, their kutis, their Bhavana kutis. The meditation huts out in the forest. And then uh, Dabba the Melon, he had a nice trick. If they came at evening, then he, did, he, he didn't bring a candle. Because he had a light and he had these uh, this, uh, extraordinary powers. So he light up his own thumb like that. Poof. And then there was a flame like this here, yeah, flaming up from his thumb, his thumb. So he went through the forest and then say, ah, you have this one. And the next uh, little bit through the forest again with the light of his thumb. Uh, flaming up, you know, and then ah, you have this kuti, and then you have this kuti, and then this show, uh, and then he went back again um, to to the monastery, the Tavana monastery, and this show, this this became so fam famous that Deva the Malian, he he would turn on his thumb, that uh, monks that were not enlightened, that wished to see this trick, they uh, deliberately delayed their 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 arrival at the Tavana monastery to after dark, so they knew. The Dabba the Malian, he will have to use his stump to, to light up the path. So that's a funny example. Then there's the, the second, this, this, the, 
the second question was how does uh, we explain it? There's no nothing really to explain. It's it's just a matter of maturity that they have re reached the maturity. One of them actually, when he saw his ha hair fall down, he was uh, shaving. First you, you, you cut it with a scissor, and then you shave afterwards. When he saw his hair fall down, this reminded him of impermanence. Uh, how tricky this body is. Then suddenly you, you lose your hair. It falls to the ground. So then you lose your body. It also falls to the ground. It rottens. So his last uh, clinging, you can say, to the body, and thereby to what you think is yourself, but it is not yourself. And this was released right there when he saw it was cut off and thrown away as some dirt on the floor. And right there, just by seeing this, he attained enlightenment. This is very common if you read the text. Uh, there's usually some instance of uh, of certain event that trigger the phase transition in itself. Another story was a nun. Uh, she, uh, she was living together with some other nuns in a small uh, monastery, uh, five or seven people or something like that. And they wished to go to hear the monks, but she said, I, I, I stay here and make uh, the hot water ready for tea when you come back. And then she stayed there and she's been a mother for seven and she's been cooking all her life. And she was so disgusted with this cooking job that she has to cook and cook and cook and cook and cook and feed and feed and clean and clean and clean and clean and clean. And clean. This whole family business for a long, long time. huh? So uh, she sat down, just was so kind of like stunned uh, by this passion regarding the entire world. And then she saw the flame on the small oil lamp. She was inside a, a monastery that was lit up by oil lamps. Then the flame went out. And this was also not this she reflected, ah, oh, this is the same as the flame of this burning process of ignorance in my mind, this burning process of greed in my mind, this burning process of hate in my mind. This, this can burn out just like that flame right there. Nibbana actually means something that is, has burned out, it's gone out, is, 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 is extinguished. Uh, so just by seeing this flame burn out from the oil lamp, she became enlightened right there. Then the, the nuns came back and uh, she hadn't made tea and then they asked, why you haven't you made tea? So if, you, if you want tea, you can make it for yourself. I don't really eat anything. And then she rea they realized that something has happened to her, that she was not like before. So there's uh, some events they are usually given uh, in the texts when uh, people explain about these uh, nuns or not. You can read about it in the Tirigata, the poems of the monks, and uh, Tirigata, sorry, and the Tirigata, the poems of the nuns, and the commentaries to these two texts, which usually explain the event that happens right up to the enlightenment and the very moment of enlightenment. The third question is, why does a new Buddha have to come instead of the same old one who came before? In other words, why does Mithya have to come instead of Shakyamuni Buddha? That's uh, very simple because you don't come back, and that's, that doesn't only account for, for uh, Samasam Buddhas, that accounts for all who attain enlightenment. The rebirth process stop, so they don't come back. Uh, there's, no, there's no coming back from Nibbana. Uh, that, that will be coming back to suffering. Uh, so no one, no one who have reached a certain level, they wish that that should happen. Uh, coming back, if you want to come back, then it's because you are afraid of nibbana. You're not afraid of life, even though it's this life that's a suffering. Nibbana is not the suffering. So the short answer is, it's impossible for any enlightened being to come back. Therefore, when a, a Buddha has gone, then he has gone. He never comes back. And that's, they cannot be designated where they are. One should not believe that there's an ego that goes, that is here and then out, then goes into Nibbana, because that's not the case. There is no ego here now. So the, how, if there is no ego here now, how can there be an ego who enters Nibbana? That's a misconception. 
Uh, regarding Metea, uh, which is uh, number five Buddha in this uh, eon, in this Kalpa, in this universal cycle, from Big Bang to the next Big Bang. That's very, very fortunate. We call it Bhatta Eon. Because this is the only time so far as we know for 91 universes back that there's been five Buddhas. You usually come one or two, and there's also certain, very rarely three, but uh, almost all others is one or two. Uh, next universe, there will be no Buddhas. There, uh, the circumstances on Earth will be severely uh, impoverished morally and ethically. Uh, cannibalism will be uh, common among all beings, uh, also humans. They will eat each other and, 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 and hunt each other, like just like the, the animals do. And also incest will be uh, common by all. As an example, I can mention that, for example, if you don't want to participate, when your father has killed his enemy, you, there's, there will be a, a ritual among human beings when there's no Buddha that you have to eat the, the, your father's enemy's brain doing a dish and if you say no to that then you will be regarded rude so it's just to give an impression about the how primitive uh, human beings are when there's no Buddha to set the score right to so say what is right and what is wrong uh, Metea he will come as far as I can see uh, from other information not from information given in the text but from other information he will come in uh, 576 million years to be exact He's called Ajitta, um, it means conqueror or invincible. Metea, because Mita means friend. So it, the, his name, uh, his first name and his family name can mean something like the unconquerable friend. Or if we should, if we should take an impersonal mode, uncon unconquerable or invincible friendliness. So he's a very, very nice guy, very good friend, very good friend. There's a text about him uh, that has been collected by a very uh, experienced uh, Burmese meditator that lived in, in London for many years. Uh, and he uh, collected all the text that is on, on the future Buddha, Buddha Mitteya. In this little booklet, it is 65 pages. I can recommend it, uh, the coming Buddha, Buddha Mitteya. It is the real booklet series. Uh, from a uh, Buddhist Publication Society, and it's number 381 and 383. Uh, and there is all that is in the text, in the ancient text, in the Tipitaka and the commentaries, uh, not from the Mahayana text, but only from the Theravada text and commentaries. These have been collected and put into this uh, small uh, textbook, uh, which I can recommend warmly. I have it also on my website as a PDF file, free. Uh, where you, you can enjoy it. It's 65 pages, you can read it in, in, in one day or so. Uh, so the coming Buddha, Buddha Mitteya, uh, this booklet, I can recommend. I'll give it a link uh, below, uh, below this uh, text, or below this video, so you can just click the link and uh, get the PDF file. I would just like to say with Metea and that in the text, when we read the text, it is common for all texts, at least those composed uh, or written or transcribed here on Sri Lanka, that the, the, the elderly monk, at least for the last uh, 1,500 years, the elderly monks who have transcribed, the, they always say, may I, for this pin, for this merit, this good karma I have won by, by transcribing this text, may I be born into the company of Buddha Mitteya, so to become enlightened under him and under the very, very uh, fortunate circumstances. It is said that uh, planet Earth will be uh, just like uh, divine, divine uh, the, the divine circumstances are now in the Tavahimsa heaven. Uh, so they will be exceedingly beautiful. People will also be very large. Uh, he will be born in a, in a city called Ketumatu, and that is the city that is now called Benares, you know, uh, Varanasi, uh, lying on the Ganges River. Uh, and he will be son of uh, uh, the main priest that is for a universal monarch that lives in this city, uh, who later on also ordains and gives his 
uh, palace and entire kingdom uh, to the Sangha. And all this is in is is told in this foretold in this in this text. Regarding what you can foretell or not foretell is to say, can you foretell everything? No, you cannot foretell everything, but you can foretell the things that already are determined now. That is to say, if you looked into the quantum mechanical wave function, then you see that there are some probabilities that are 1.0, they are 100%. They will happen with, if they are not modified in the intervening period, then they will happen with certainty. And these things you can, you can, you can predict with certainty. Then there are other things that you cannot predict with certainty. Uh, what Matea will, for, for example, what he will eat at his seven years birthday, that might not be determined now, so it cannot be told. So the future can be regarded as a, some kind of sponge with some hard parts or, uh, and some soft parts and some area parts where there's zero probability uh, or there's 12% uh, chance and uh, some other chance also. Then you cannot discriminate between these changes. Uh, but if in these very rare cases that they're either 0% or 100% probability, that is the probability is either 0 or 1, pure, then you can predict that they will either happen if it's 1 or not happen if it's 0. And that's what, how the Buddha, they, they look into this, uh, this quantum mechanical wave function and read it directly. The last question is about Kamma. Uh, is it possible to nullify the effects of previous bad karma from past lives and, and present, which might result in illness through good deeds done in this life? And yes, it is. It is possible to nullify it. Let's say, for example, uh, a man, he uh, is a soldier, and he, uh, with his sword in ten lives, he, he both kill and maim a lot of uh, people and in, in the meantime in between the wars he's a butcher so he cuts up uh, cuts pigs for example then he's born uh, uh, and have various diseases cancer and he has very short life length because of this but let's say that instead of this instead of uh, continuing his butcher business his soldier business then he start building hospitals for the sick and he succeeded because he was suddenly a millionaire or a billionaire, and he built thousands of hospitals for sick people and for dying people. Then uh, he will counteract this karma, that this specific karma that he before he has taken life. Now he's giving life back by making hospitals, giving medicine, feeding the poor, and so on. So what he he lost before, he's kind of like nullifying. And then it, it, we say in the principal case, you cannot nullify it completely. But you can bend the effect so much, you can modify the effect so much that it may be that his uh, previous bad karma would be felt like, uh, for example, a mosquito bite, or that he get a splinter in the finger, instead of losing his life, his life and getting a cancer, uh, or uh, b being uh, being murdered uh, with uh, being stabbed in the back or something like that, as a karma gave go of his uh, past soldiering and uh, slaughtering of other beings. So it can be modified, and we are modifying it right now. We are modifying it all the time. Uh, basically, it's a probability way that goes, you can say it has a, a function where it has a high uh, efficacy, and then it, it goes out again. But it's a kind of like an echo that comes back several times. Uh, if you send other, other waves out, and these two waves meet, then they will interact, and one wave will diminish the other wave. So doing good diminish the the doing bad before, uh, and it can modify the effect so much that it doesn't mean anything. For example, having a mosquito bite if you kill uh, 100 people in your past life doesn't it doesn't really matter. You you might not even notice it, but still there is a small diminutive effect. So that's our chance actually. That's why we say uh, that the the noble life. Oh, sorry, the human life is fortunate because you have a chance to modify your own karma. You have a chance to do something good. You have a chance to do it. The animals don't have this chance. And uh, the devas, they are usually too careless because they are too uh, engulfed in their own luxury. 
ex- as an example, I can mention that Saka, he has he has a whorehouse that is seven stories high. And there's kind of like a a tunnel or, or, or road that goes up. And in each room, there's seven ladies in the same color. And of course, for him to go to this uh, this uh, 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 this whorehouse and he invites his guests also there, uh, this is for him a major deal. This is something that he he have difficulties with not doing. And uh, while he's there, he he doesn't care much about doing good. Uh, even uh, having uh, keeping an eye out what the humans doing and what the humans need, because he's so engulfed in his own sense pleasure, like also humans are today, uh, in a, to a very large extent, and they become negligent and careless uh, and complacent. I think ah, because I have it good now, then also this will continue. But that's not the case actually. If you're good circumstances now, you might actually burn off your karma, you may exhaust your probabilities. And if there's no new probability, no new karma to support you in the next life, as the Buddha said, it's, it's the only support you have. It's a good karma. It's the only thing you can take with you to the next life. It's a good karma what I've done in this life. Uh, and in prior lives also. So that one will crash, you can say. Uh, what do I mean by crash? It is to being reborn as lower than human, where you have significantly less degree of freedom to do something good, and thereby significant less degree of freedom to uh, influence your own future in a positive direction, where you get higher degrees of freedom, uh, have a, a more beautiful body, more strong body, more beautiful, uh, more acute senses, uh, that, like the devas have, compared to the human level. So this I can warmly, warmly recommend uh, this is one practice of the Buddhists is to do pin, to to do merit, huh? uh, and that is basically, if we should say again, uh, three kinds of merit: uh, dana, sila, bhavana. Dana, giving, all kinds of giving, uh, giving to the poor, giving to the needy, giving to those worthy of it, giving to the sangha, to the pure parts of the sangha, to the noble parts of the sangha. If one can find someone who is noble. Uh, dana, sila, is the merit that contains that you don't do something evil, that you keep the five precepts and the eight precepts of the on, on observance days, and then occasionally it takes a meditation course ten, uh, with ten precepts or even more. Uh, bhavana, meditation, or reflection, uh, or dhamma study, is also, bhavana just means mental development. That can be done intellectually or by meditation or by reflection. So this is the three ways of, of main ways of, of making merit. I think this uh, actually covers up today. I just like to say that I have made three videos called Karma Mechanics uh, on uh, my uh, SoundCloud profile, which I can highly recommend where I more or less have taken all the citations of the Buddha uh, regarding, not all, but a significant part, what he said about karma and the effect of karma, vipaka. Uh, normally also someone should say regarding this, karma just means action. There's mental action, thinking. There's verbal action, saying. Mental action can also be, you say something to yourself that we regard as verbal action. Then there's physical bodily action. Kaya Kama, something you do with the body. All things, all these are, are accumulated as probability waves. It's the intention to do them, the intention to think, the intention to speak, the intention to move the body with a specific purpose that sets in the, the karmic effect. The karmic effect is called Vipaka or Falla, which means fruit, uh, the fruit of the seed. It ripens into that after a significant time. So what is in normal Western culture called karma actually is not the karma in the Buddhist sense. The Buddhist sense is the intention behind the action, but not the result of the action. The result of the action is called vipaka or falla. But uh, I'll give the links to these uh, three uh, Dhamma speeches called karma mechanics and also the links to uh, I've written about, for example, what leads to being rich, what leads to be, what karma leads to being rich, what karma leads to being pure, poor, what karma leads to being ugly, 
what karma leads to being beautiful, what karma leads to long life, short life, being respected, being disrespected, uh, being famous, not being famous, and so on. All these uh, specific causes uh, that are given in the text, I have collected in some uh, Dhamma drops that I will also put the links below. Again, uh, please send in your questions, big or small, uh, to my email, bante.samahita at gmail.com uh, and then we'll check them uh, every Sunday. Thank you for your attention and have a nice day. And let me take the usual text. Namo Tassu Bhagavatto Arahatto Samma Sammudasa Worthy Honorable and perfectly self enlightened is a blessed Buddha. Again, since this is the last chance of getting enlightened in this universe, check this out. Mateya is the man who takes the last and he takes many, he takes that the Buddha Gautama, he says, ah, as I will have hundreds of enlightened monks around me. Mateya, he will have thousands. So he's said to enlighten very, very, very many beings, both human beings and above. So check him out and also check out what this book says about how to meet him, what actions will lead to meeting him. I also have a text on that. I will also give that link below. Because this is important for your personal future. Thank you for your attention. Have a nice day.